I built a script that constantly scrapes this URL so that every time you click on this video, it updates the title in accordance with the number of views it currently has. Now, I got this idea from Tom Scott, who did the same thing, and you should definitely check out his video. But there were a few problems that I had. My main one being is that if you want to do this yourself, there are a lot of tutorials online for you to do that, but they were all a bit inaccessible. So I reverse engineered his script in Python and provide an entire tutorial and link the code in the description. So if you want to do the same thing yourself, you could have it done in less than a day with little to no programming experience. So if you want to do the thing that everyone just does on PyImage search and download the code, then you can definitely do that. But I personally think this is a good introduction for anyone looking to familiarize themselves with web scraping and the YouTube API. Now, the most important part of this script is being able to run it wirelessly and without much maintenance. Because, you know, as much as I care about this, I'm not about to be running a Python script on my laptop 24-7. Thankfully, there's Heroku. Heroku is a free site that lets you run a web server and host a website from the cloud. Now, you generally think of a web server as a way to access web pages, and that is true. But a better way to think of it is like a robot with multiple buttons. For every button press, or in a web server's case, every web request that's made to it, it can do different things. Like most of the time it just returns a web page, but there's a lot more that can be done. And that's what we're going to use our advantage here. Now, this is my main app.py file. What this does is that it takes all the incoming requests to my web server and determines what to do with them. Just like the way a website um, would if you go to it at a certain URL. For example, if you go to my app slash YTB, then it runs this YTB method, which does all this, which we'll get to in a minute. So the first part of this I want to get into is the part that actually gets the view count from YouTube. But fortunately, that's pretty simple. Like I just said, whenever a, a valid request is made to a web server, it does something, usually returning a web page. And it just so happens that for every YouTube URL, the, um, every YouTube video URL, the view count is printed in plain text right under the video screen. Usually this is done from a web browser, but thankfully using the Python request module, it can be done using a Python script as well. So first what we have to do is make a request to the web server, which should just return a raw HTML page. And then from there, it's just a matter of cutting it at certain indexes and removing all non-numerical characters to get a plain integer of the view count of the video, which is returned here. The next thing we want to look at is the how to actually update your YouTube title. Now, fortunately, Google's offer this thing called the YouTube Data API that allows a user to set up a project and update their data in YouTube programmatically. The problem is that every time you do it, you have to manually validate your credentials because, you know, Google's kind of finicky about security. Thankfully, using the pickle module, after filling this once, we can save all of our credentials into a token.pickle file, which, with our client secret JSON file, lets us load up and authenticate anytime we want. Full disclosure, I wasn't exactly sure which path to put the pickle in, because when I put it directly with the file, it didn't work for some reason, so I kind of just put it in every path, and it, it worked. So, uh, if you have any difficulties there, then just do what I did. After that, it's just a simple call to the data API to identify the video by its ID, replace the title with an input string that we're going to get, and print, um, and print out a response for the user. Again, all the code for this is in the description, so if you have some trouble with it, then just use the examples I have below. So in order to actually get the view count and update the title accordingly, we're going to do three things. The first is make a call to the get authenticated service function from the previous file, and authenticate the Google API in order to prove that it's us. The second is get, um, make a call to the getFuse function above and create a simple string for the new title. The third is to make a call to the previous upload video function and actually change the title accordingly. I map these all to the, YT, um, to the YTB function so that every time a user makes a request to get or um, get video app .com ytb then it runs this function and, auto, um, and automatically uh, updates the title. Now the problem with this is that it only actually gets the view count and updates the title every time you make a request to the specific URL. So in order to do that consistently, because again, we want to have uh, this running hands off, we need to start a thread. Now a thread is basically a separate execution flow that allows your machine to do something in the background while running a main function, essentially allowing you to run two functions at the same time without interfering with one another. 
You can see what I've done for this one is that I've got a global variable for view count, as well as run the get views function again in order to get the live number of views on the video. Now what this does is that it constantly checks to see if the view count's updated, and if it has, then great, it updates the view count global variable, and it makes another call to this specific URL that runs the function. And if it's not, then it just does nothing and continues on. It's also um, You can also see that every 60 seconds, it makes another request to this URL, which it does for a reason I'll get into in a minute. So this here is the index function that's called every time a user goes to my main app URL. What this does is that it creates the thread and runs this function right here, which loops 10 times and then requests it again and repeats the whole process. The reason it does this is because Heroku isn't necessarily nice to a, a function that runs on too long. So if a method is running for an extremely long period of time, i.e. if we just made this uh, infinite while loop, then after a while it would just cancel out and uh, the view count wouldn't update automatically. But because we have this function that delays it every 10 seconds and once it's done, requests it again, it's basically refreshing the page over and over again and keeping on, and you know, going again with the server analogy, keeping on clicking that button and checking to see if the view count is updated. Alright, so thank you for watching and sticking around for the tutorial if you did. Uh, if there are any bugs or issues, then just message me directly or leave a comment down below. I've got a bunch more videos like this, everything from obstacle avoiding drones to automatically sorting trash cans, and you know, hopefully you guys can learn from it. So, yeah, enjoy your new live view counter.